And all you need to do to generate an electrical field is have a moving magnetic field. So if you can move magnets, you'll create an electrical field. And, if you, and they, they move the magnets right in front of these yeah. uh, coiled wires, yeah, right. and they can harness yeah. the electricity of just so. moving magnets, just an electrical field. Now you can that. That's all that there is to it. They don't need any... So that is the uh, generator. That is the, the, this is the generator right here. Just the, the magnets and the uh, copper wire coils. And they coil it up because you can collect more energy based on how many coils you, you have. So this is the entire thing. You just put um, magnets and coiled copper wire together and use some power to move the magnets around. And then you just draw the, draw the electricity right off of the, uh, the coils. And so the wind generator, they just put, it on, put them on blades and, and raise them up high. Wind does all the work. So is it more efficient than the standard wind generators? Uh, this is a standard wind generator. It's just a matter of all the wind generators use the same principle. It's just a matter of how big the magnets you can buy, uh -huh, how many see. coils you can get, how the high you can put your your blades. The main advantage is that it's something you can build yourself. So it's somewhat adapt design for being able to build yourself rather than um, a commercial one, which requires more like complicated machinery. As you can see, like we just wound these coils by hand. So it's kind of it's kind of an open source design that's been developed, um, kind of just by people that have been doing it themselves on in various communities and things. And we were kind of surprised at how easy it is. It's actually not that difficult, as you can see. It's just a few components to put together, and um, you know you have something that will produce energy for the next 30 years. So it's pretty cool. What was the cost of this one? Um, the cost of the generator itself was around $400 or so. Um, the advantage of this design is you can do a lot of scrap type stuff. I mean, you can get a lot of things from scrap metal. We got this bearing, for instance, from a junkyard um, yeah. for an old van. And so it can be relatively inexpensive because most of the metal components you can scavenge. So, <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's not that expensive. 2,000 to 3,000 watts and like a, you know, 40 mile an hour wind, something like that. Um, you know, obviously the average power output is going to be quite a bit lower than that, but um, this is about the size you'd use for an average home. Great. So, yeah. So $400 generator. Yeah. High an average home. I mean, it's a lot of labor, but if you don't mind doing it yourself, it's it's a cool project How to do. How much labor was it? It's probably. I mean, you could build one of these and a few people working for a week, basically. And I mean, you can do many at a time, and that makes it a lot faster because you can yeah. just do the. I mean, it's always a little bit longer when you do it the first time. And once you get, I mean, there's guys that do this at, in communities and they just turn them out. Like every, every week they build like three or something and then they can power their, all their neighbors' houses and just like, you know, it's like a virus that keeps spreading. They just keep spreading how to, how to do it and, it and people keep building them. So it's kind of an exciting thing that, I mean, you can really like achieve energy independence with something you can do yourself. I mean, solar and everything is really cool, but it's not as much of a do-it-yourself kind of project. I mean... This is something that's it's not kind of requires minimal metalworking skills, and that's about it. So it's really neat. Is there a way of gauging how much wind is enough wind in your area, for example? Um, yeah, there's actually well, at least for Iowa, there's the Iowa Wind Calculator, and I think they have similar things for other states where you can go online and you put in your city and state, and it will give you and you put in your tower height, and it will um, basically tell you for different turbine sizes how much output you're going to get. So it's kind of a real handy tool to use, and you can, um, I mean, if you want to do a really detailed study, you do like an anometer and you take measurements for like a year, because every site is a little bit different. But that, I mean, the online tools will give you a pretty good um, yearly estimate. So that's a real nice, handy thing to have. Whatever, I'll just run it. There it is. Okay, put it for the pole when you put the, the that little thing through the, the center point here. Excuse me. Okay, well the magnets are going to line up, okay, but that's okay. Let's keep going up. Okay. Does that screw in there? Uh-huh. What you want to do is, um, yeah, take your end that way a little bit. There we go. 
Just keep shifting it around a little bit. There we go. Oh, I see. Yeah, you've got... Oh, um, yeah, the blade, we had to take this down for repairs because the blade hit one of the guy wires. So we, um, what we did was increase the spacing here. We put the generator a little bit farther out to prevent it from hitting the tower. So we just took it down, repaired the blade with epoxy and putting it back up again. So we put this thing in. This holds it, um, prevents the thing from, um, from coming loose. We put a little lock nut, it's called. all year just to be able to do this. <laughs> well, I've probably done this about ten, uh, at least ten times. It's a mindfulness thing. So uh, what does open source mean? Well, it just basically um, means the designs are on the internet, anyone can contribute, um, and basically everything's available for free for everyone. And the cool thing about it is it's kind of like a develop community of developers testing it and re, you know, putting in design inputs. We actually took a design that was available on the internet. So that's the cool thing about it, it's just kind of a community of people working on it and just kind of all helping each other. And there's kind of a, it's a cool online community doing these kind of things and really like, it's really neat. Like, I mean, they have all the resources and everything for it. So. Excellent. Can you give any of that uh, the web addresses? Or? Yeah, the, the site we use mainly was called Other Power, otherpower.com, and um, or I think it's .org, otherpower.org, and um, they have tons of resources on the different turbine sizes they've done. They've done some that have been, um, I think, 25 feet in diameter, the same design, uh -huh. that have been like twice the capacity of this. So they've they're like one of the main sites for working on that kind of thing Excellent. so yeah so it's it's exciting and I, I'm just looking forward to building my next wind turbine I mean it's kind <laughs> of like every time you do it you want to refine it a little bit more and you get more ideas and like you can try something different every time so it's a lot of fun Excellent. good job yeah. if nothing else it's just a fascinating way to monitor the energy of the wind in general you know, you, you, you take it for granted, like, how much different, like, every second is so different. 